Deer Park High School and welcome to the Deer Network. Today is February 1st, 2017. I'm Emily Martin. And I'm Colin Cook. Today we go behind the scenes of last month's majestic court and take a look at the huge day in sports yesterday. But first, your weekly news. The 36th annual production of Hello Texas is this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night right here at South Campus in the PAC. Each night will feature a completely different show of singers and performances by the escorts and cheerleaders. Tickets will be available at the door for $10. Don't miss these awesome shows. They start each night at 7.30. In less exciting news, juniors who have not taken the TSIA will be testing next Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday at their given location. Students who do not finish during the first week will complete the exam on February 15th or 16th. Juniors, we're being told it's very important for you to take this test seriously and try your best. If not, it's your funeral. Congratulations to the Deer Park Girls and Boys State nominees, Madeline Green, Elise Harrell, Emily Sample, Shane Duckett, and Jimmy Paz. These students have been selected to attend a summer program designed to enable them to experience how our government works. While that may just sound like a summer of lying, broken promises, and general dysfunction, American Legion Girls and Boys State is among the most respected educational programs of government instruction for high school students, and a great honor. Congratulations again, and we know each of you will represent Deer Park well. The biggest sporting event in the nation comes to town this weekend for Super Bowl 51, and Houston's been working for many months to give the city a fresh coat of paint. Adrian Romero and Josue Rodriguez traveled to the city to see what's happening. Lombardi Trophy, a coveted award given to the best team of the season on football's biggest stage. A lot of people know about what happens in a big game, but not a lot know about what goes on in the city hosting it. This year, the Super Bowl is coming to Houston, and the city has put $1.5 billion into giving downtown a makeover in preparation for the event. $250 million will be put into a facelift for the George R. Brown Convention Center, and $400 million has been used to build the Marriott Marquis, which sits right off of Discovery Green and will serve as a host hotel for the area. The Super Bowl isn't the only thing fans can look forward to. Houston has put on many events in the weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, such as the NFL experience at the George R. Brown Convention Center, which contains many fun activities as well as the chance to meet some of your favorite players. It takes many people to put on such a big event and make everything run smoothly so the fans can have as much fun as possible. Oh well, I chose to volunteer for the Super Bowl because I found this way to give back to my community. I am a native Houstonian and since Houston is the center of the world right now, at least on top, I just wanted to be a part of it. It's awesome working here. You're meeting a lot of people from everywhere. You're greeting them. You're able to direct them where they want to do it. And most of all, you're making them happy and making them feel welcome here in Houston. Well, my name is Frankie Stanball. I'm a security guard for safe management. Uh, we do security at uh, George R. Brown Convention Center and NRG Park. George R. Brown is a very big place and uh, it takes a lot of uh, people to secure the facility. Super Bowl 51 will prove to be a memorable event thanks to the improvements made to the city as well as efforts from local Houstonians given their time to make sure their hometown is represented well. Thanks guys, and speaking of sports, Deer Park had a huge day last night. For all the details, we turn to Luke Lyles. That's right guys, our varsity teams won big across the board last night. First we'll start with soccer where the boys traveled to Sam Rayburn. David Garcia and Anthony Sandoval both netted goals to help the Deer to a 2-1 victory. They play back here at home this Friday against Pasadena looking to stay perfect in district. Meanwhile, the girls were here at Abshire last night squaring off against the Texans and it didn't take long for them to get on board. Madeline Hill scores first, Deer lead 1-0 in the first half. But the dam burst open in the second half. Maddie started the wave of scoring with her second goal of the night. All smiles for Lady Deer. Sydney Harris gets a nice assist from her teammate and puts one right by the goalie to get another goal on the board. Nia Shepard with this crazy corner kick that just soars and curves right into the goal. Emily Sample also tagged one on with these crafty moves and put one to the left of the goalie. And Edith Gonzalez runs down the ball to put one over the goalie's head for a nice goal. Now to basketball, the Lady Deer traveled to Pasadena and won handily 44 to 10. They extend their unbeaten district record to 13 and 0 with just two games left. Congratulations, ladies, keep it up. The boys, on the other hand, have had a tough season so far with the two and seven district record going into last night's game. They're in must win mode, beast mode. 
We pick up last night against the four and six Eagles after being down six at the break. Pasadena jumped all over the deer to start the second half and extended their lead to 18 in the third. But in the final period, our guys exploded to mount a furious comeback, leaving the game tied with seven seconds to go. I could tell you what happened next, but we'll let you listen to the Deer Network radio announcer, Chase Hernandez, on the call. Inbounds with seven seconds. Here we go out of the timeout. Walker with it. Three seconds to two. Bradshaw has to shoot it with one. It's up and it will go! Game winning shot! Dylan Bradshaw, it falls! And the Deer win it on their home court, 59! 57. With that game-winning shot at the buzzer, the guys still have a shot at the playoffs. They're back home this Friday against Laporte. Guys? Wow, what a finish. I just wish we had some footage of the game-winning shot, but no one in sports broadcasting covered it. Before we go, the Deer Network was backstage at last month's Majestic Court and went one-on-one -on -one with some of the contestants. Check it out. Oh snap, we're here at the 63rd Annual Majestic Court. I'm Adrian Romero. And I'm Pam Sanchez. The contestants over there are getting grilled by the judges, but what they don't know is that the Deer Network has real hard-hitting questions. Let's go. Come on! I'm here with Blake Shelton. So Blake, uh, what qualities do you think helped you get into Majestic Court? Well, I guess I'm a pretty good looking guy and, um, you know, a lot of friends, so. Popular, okay. Honestly, I'm not quite sure. I think just being friendly and being outgoing and positive all the time. I'd have to say be my skating abilities on street and on uh, park ramps. So. I would say rowdiness. Honestly, I have no idea. I'm just really honored that people actually know me. I have a lot of friends, I think, maybe. Uh, Popularity? No, 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 no. Uh, well, I have considerably less friends than Aaron, so I, I started a fundraiser, and I promised people, I, everyone, I gave them a quarter if they would just write my name into the ballot. Eric, were you as surprised as I was when you heard that you were being selected for Majestic Court? Oh, uh, yeah. You have some pretty nice hair, uh, but also Eric Gutierrez has a nice set of hair. Uh, do you find yourselves in hair competitions? Oh, well, yeah, we uh, DM each other every other week, telling us about new shampoos we're trying, and this week I think he's got me. Who inspires you? I don't know. My dog, Princess. Um, probably J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt? Yeah. <laughs> if you were to win Majestic Court tonight, what would you do to make the world a better place? I'd honestly, I don't really know. Be even more majestic as a winner. Make America majestic again? Zach, if you could be any Disney princess, what would it be? Uh, probably Aaron Edmondson. Wow, that was really sweet. Without hesitation, Snow White. Rapunzel. Well, the hair is awesome, so. How many rounds do you think can last in a fight with 20 fifth graders and every third round a sixth grade boss? If there were a talent portion in Majestic Court, what would y'all's talents be? Hitting dingers. Hitting dingers. I can do yee yee really well. Could you show us something? Yee yee! Wow, impressive. Now that's talent. My talent would be talking really fast. She does do that a lot and loud. Probably car tricks. I'm pretty good at them. Make a mean uh, boiled egg. Singing. Singing? Singing. Can you sing something for us? Whoa, on the spot? Yes. Yeah, your favorite song. Come catch me at Hello Texas February 4th. I'll be there. So no one told you life was gonna be this way. It's just somewhere in the pile, okay? That's not the card, no? What just happened? Would you rather fight 10 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Ooh. <laughs> what? Uh, Miranda, describe your ideal date for me. Um, my ideal date would be... For sure there needs to be food. Um, yeah, just anything with food, honestly. A picnic on a tall, tall mountain with Adrian Romero. Wow, I don't know. <laughs> All right, hold on. We're not, we're not related. Eric, if, if you could take back any moment in your past and redo it over again, what would it be? Would it be the Laporte game? That's exactly what I was going to say, Adrian. I would keep my hands together, and I would have caught the ball. How proud are y'all to be American? 
I am so proud. I love America. Very proud. How proud are you to be an American? I love America so much. I'm so proud to be American. I'm very proud. America is the best country in the world. So how about how we kicked all the Native Americans off their own land and made it our own land? <laughs> Just get out. Okay. How do you think that the U.S. foreign policy has affected the Middle East in the past decade? Uh, uh, <laughs> said foreign policy? No. Uh, I feel like the process of regime change that we've taken in the Middle East has only uh, increased uh, the amount of hostile governments to the United States because while it did create a new government, it did not create a government that the people wanted. It was the government that America installed, and therefore there has been a many anti-American sentiments from that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for everyone who stopped to talk to us, and congratulations to the winners. That's it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed it. For Luke Lyles and all of us here at the Dare Network, I'm Emily Martin. And I'm Colin Cook. Have a great day and a wonderful rest of the week. And, and go, go Deer! deer.